name's Alan Bean. I am uh, used to be an astronaut years ago, and uh, I was uh, Pete Conrad's lunar module pilot on Apollo 12, along with Dick Gordon. And uh, so we became, during that period, even beforehand, we were good friends. Uh, back when I was a test pilot, he was an instructor in test pilot school. We got to know each other. I got on his crew. We worked together. We backed up Apollo 9. And then we flew to the moon on Apollo 12, made a couple of moon walks, and uh, uh, we got along just great. We thought a lot alike, and uh, he was a conceptual guy, and I was more of a detailed guy, so it was a, a nice uh, arrangement uh, for as a team. And uh, Pete was killed uh, almost 13 years ago now, July the 8th of 2000, well, it'll be 13 years. It was a big shock to everyone, and uh, we uh, I've missed him every day since then, incidentally. I think about him a lot. Uh, but the night before the ceremony there at uh, Johnson Space Center, where they plant a tree, a dedicated tree, to any astronaut that's died, uh, I knew I'd have to say a few words. And uh, so the night before, I was thinking about it. Pete's not a... Uh, Moreau's a guy. He's, uh, his motto was, if you can't be good, be colorful. So he was good and colorful, but that was his way of thinking about things. And I said, well, I'm going to talk about him a little bit, but I don't want it to be like uh, you hear at all these things. So uh, the night before, I thought about it quite a bit and I tried to come up with something new. I did come up with a couple of ideas. And uh, then as I was driving to the ceremony with my wife, Leslie, I was talking about it, rehearsing it, and she made a couple of excellent suggestions about it. And so we get there, and uh, several people, astronauts, uh, George Abbey, who was our boss, saying talk a, a little bit, introduced me. And then I got up there, and I... Uh, stood there a few minutes and I said, last night when I was thinking about this, after I dropped off to sleep, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and Pete Conrad was at the end of my bed. And he said, don't worry about it, Al. When you get there tomorrow, I'll help you out. So I said, then let's uh, have some silence now and uh, I'll uh, see what Pete has to say. So we were all quiet, and I was looking up uh, towards the heavens, and uh, all of a sudden I started talking, oh, okay, Pete, thank you for coming. I didn't know exactly what to say. And then Pete tells me some things to say, and then I say them, you know. Of course, the audience is completely uh, shocked and blown away by this because this isn't, astronaut talk. This isn't the way official NASA functions go, see. But being an artist, they can't fire me anymore, and so I could do what I thought Pete would like. And so then I say, okay, I'll do that, and uh, I'll tell George Abbey that. Then I turn around, and I said, George, Pete wants to say something to you through me. And then I looked up again, and I said, now look, Pete says George, that he was the smallest guy in the office all these years, and he doesn't want to have the smallest tree, and he doesn't want the tree to be the same as anybody else's. And then I went back and listened for Pete, what he had to say, and then I said, George, he wants his tree not to have white lights, but to have colored lights. Because his motto was, if you can't be good, be colorful. And we all know Pete Conrad was good and colorful. And so I said, thanks, Pete, for helping me out today. This is great. And that was it. And then I left. And I remember Paul Weitz, who was speaking after me, because he flew with Pete on Skylab. He got up there, and the first thing he says, never follow an artist. <laughs> So anyway, it was a great moment, and then George Abbey, uh, as Pete requested, uh, next year, had next uh, Christmas when they lit those trees, well, he, all of them were white except 
Pete's and he had multicolors. And I noticed over the years, sometimes Pete's tree is colorful lights and sometimes it's red lights and anyhow, it's different at all the rest. And that's the story. It's a great memory of Pete, a great memory of the kind of astronaut he was. When I was there 18 years, I felt that he was the best astronaut that I had uh, worked with, uh, not because I flew with him, but because he just seemed to be natural at it. He never had hidden agendas. His mind was always being on the best astronaut he could be, flying the best mission he could fly, all these things that uh, ideal astronauts are supposed to be then he was those things. Not every astronaut was that way. He, he was great and it, he deserves a colorful tree.